be able to see me now. Okay, I can see you, Donald. Good to see you, buddy. Hey. Let's see. I. All right. Well, um, I can't tell. Are the panelists all in? Elmer, are you here? I'm here. I'm, I don't know. Did, um, did I disappear? Or? No, I can see you. Kavai, okay, are you, you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Excellent. Craig, are you here? Yep. Yeah. Gail? I'm here. Excellent. Well, you know what? What about Juliet? And Scott. How about yes? How about Juliet? Well, Scott Scott's here, but Juliet isn't in yet. But she's in the way. She is in as one of the attendees. So she just needs to get switched to panelist. Uh, there she is. That just switched her. Okay. Cool. Am I here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, the uh, existential question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Can you see me? <laughs> that is a great question. Hold on a second. Um, yes, I can see you now. Okay. Okay. Finally, well, welcome everybody uh, to the getting into the internet at the last possible instant show. All right, so let me see if I can get started. Is John Simons in yet? Not that I can see, I don't think so yet. Buddy. Apparently he is still he's still stranded. <laughs> still no John. Oh, what's that? There he is. You can Oh yeah, okay. Hey John. Hello, I'm trying I'm looking for the video button. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Good luck finding that. And, it, and wait. Okay, this webinar has started. Um, it's streaming, yeah. so I suppose I, I, if everyone is here, we can begin um, whenever everyone is ready. Um, we're <laughs> as ready as we're ever going to be, I think. Uh, okay, so I'm going to. Uh, can you hear me? Can uh, you guys hear me? Yes, John. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. Greetings from the Hawaii Literary Arts Council. First, a little housekeeping for please mute your microphones as soon as we be begin the program, which is apparently now. Also, if you wish, the chat will be open for your questions during the ceremony. So if we have enough time at the end, I'll ask awardees to respond to the questions that you address to them. I'm uh, Eric Paul Schaefer hapless um, seat of this particular meeting, HLAC board member and trustee for the Elliott Cades Award for Literature. HLAC was founded in the 60s as a nonprofit organization to support activities and projects of Hawaii's writing community. Over the decades, HLAC has supported numerous readings, publications, workshops, programs in schools and prisons and other events. Many of you in the audience have been active in HLAC and part of these efforts. One difference today is we are no longer supported uh, and do, no, do not any longer receive public funds, but are privately supported and our mission is significantly reduced in the past decades. Uh, HLAC has always been an enthusiastic participant in the annual Honolulu Book and Music Festival. And we thank Roger Jelinek, his team and our new hosts at the University of Hawaii Manoa for including us in this year's virtual version of the former May weekend gathering. Here to introduce the Loretta D. Petri Award is our HLAC treasurer, John Simons. John. Okay, hi, I got my mic on, yes, and here we go. The uh, Hawaii Literary Arts Council is uh, making its fifth annual awards in memory of uh, Loretta D. Petri. Uh, to recognize members and friends of the Hawaii literary community for dedicated support of writing opportunities and activities over 
over the years. Loretta Petrie was a former leader and driving force in the Hawaii Literary Arts Council. And, uh, and alongside her very busy career uh, as a teacher and administrator at Chaminade University, where she took an active role in publishing and editing its uh, literary magazine while sustaining her own lifelong interest in writing. In addition, she also was an editor and mentor uh, and guiding influence to many other uh, writers in uh, Hawaii um, outside of uh, Chaminade. So she had um, cast a very wide net in terms of, um, of helping people. And um, our intent is to continue her legacy uh, by um, recognizing members of the Hawaii literary community whose contributions have benefited the work and advancement of others. So this, um, she's a person very generous with her time and expertise in life and also with her resources in, in death. And uh, the award is both inspired and supported by an unrestricted gift to the Hawaii Literary Arts Council by Loretta Petrie, who died in March 2014. We uh, begin uh, with our first uh, Petrie winner, uh, uh, recipient tonight, and I'll introduce the person who is going to introduce her. Scott Kikawa, the uh, author of Kona Wins, a uh, winner of the Cades Award last year, and the, also the author of a much-awaited second novel about Hawaii in the mid-20th century called Red Dirt, which is uh, due out from Bamboo Ridge Press next month. And so we uh, welcome Scott, who will introduce uh, Gail Harada. Scott, it's all yours. Thank you, John. If I were to enumerate all that Gail Harada has accomplished and has contributed to Hawaii's literary community over the course of her lifetime, we would need the entire hour allotted for this program just for my introduction alone. So I'll do my best in the couple of minutes or so I've been allowed to express what Gail has achieved and given. Gail earned a BA in English from Stanford University and an MFA from the University of Iowa Writers Workshop. Almost immediately after concluding her education, Gail was at the center of the genesis of a movement which we would come to know as local literature as a participant and critical organizer of the seminal talk story conference of 1978. As a writer, Gail has published many pieces over the years locally and nationally. Her book, Beyond Green Tea and Grapefruit, stands as a quintessential example of Hawaii literature for its honesty, authenticity, and beauty. As a poet, Gail has been honored with the prestigious Pushcart Prize, considered one of the highest American poetry awards. Gail has touched the Hawaii literary community in her many roles. She has developed young and new writers as a poet in residence for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts Poets in the Schools program, and as a professor of writing and literature at Kapi'olani Community College. She has been the backbone of Bamboo Ridge Press, an institution I'm proud to be associated with. Julia, Julia had the same reaction. <laughs> as a guest editor, grants officer, production manager, uh, and copy editor. Bamboo Ridge founding editors, Eric Chalk and Daryl Lum will agree. She's represented all Hawaii as a speaker and reader at numerous conferences across the nation. And most recently, Gail has been appointed to the city and county of Honolulu's Commission on Culture and the Arts. Those are just a few of the highlights. Our managing editor at Bamboo Ridge, Joy Kobayashi Sintron, has said that Gail, at this point, is the person at Bamboo Ridge who cares most about each individual writer's work, and in some cases, maybe more than the writer. 
I can certainly attest to that personally as one of those cases. I've been told by a lot of people I know when they learn of my debut novel, wow, you wrote a book. They were rightfully surprised. While it's true that I wrote something, it would not have been a book without Gail's hand. I think that many others who have seen their own work in print over the years would share that sentiment. I believe it is no exaggeration to say that Hawaii literature as we know it would not exist if not for Gail. It is a singular honor and my great pleasure to introduce author, poet, teacher, mentor, professor, editor, and friend, this year's recipient of the Loretta D. Petrie Award, Gail Harada. Thank you so much, Scott, for such a glowing introduction. I feel slightly embarrassed. <laughs> okay. But it is truly an honor to receive the Loretta Petrie Award. And I'd like to thank the Hawaii Literary Arts Council and the Hawaii Book and Music Festival for hosting this session. Um, am I on? Okay, um, so why do I feel it's so important to support Hawaii literature and Hawaii writers? I think I have always been interested in the stories and literature of Hawaii. Even when I was very young, Hawaii was the most important place in the world to me. Maybe because my family had to move to a US Army base in Japan for almost five years when I was in first grade. Growing up on an Army base and missing Hawaii made me aware of race, heritage, culture, and place. I was never very interested in writing poems or stories that were not somehow rooted in culture or place. So when I graduated from the Iowa Writers Workshop and came back home, I was lucky because I was in the right place at the right time. I had met Eric Chalk in a workshop at UH Manoa. We happened to run into each other at the old Mo'ili Ili post office, and he told me the poets in the school's program was looking for another poet. That was a fateful meeting, in a good way. If I hadn't run into Eric, I probably wouldn't have become a poet in the schools, attended the first talk story conference, or gotten involved with Bamboo Ridge. Wayne Westlake was the first poet in the schools I observed teaching when I got hired, and I met so many other Hawaii poets through that program. Eric let me know about the first talk story conference, and he and Daryl Lum published their first issue of Bamboo Ridge in December 1978. I was immediately drawn into their vision of a nonprofit press that would, quote, foster the appreciation understanding and creation of literary, visual, or performing arts by, for, or about Hawaii's people. Hawaii has many literary communities, and Bamboo Ridge is the community I feel closest to. Bamboo Ridge's vision resonates with what I value in writing. So I want to thank Daryl and Eric, who were the first Petrie Award winners for founding Bamboo Ridge. I want to thank everyone who has served the literary community by keeping Bamboo Ridge run, running during COVID, especially Wingtech Lum, Joy Kobayashi Sinchon, Misty Saniko, Donald Carrera Cheng, Ken Tokuno, Juliet Kono, and Jean Toyama. Many of the Hawaii writers I know believe in the power of literature and the importance of work that preserves and tells authentic, layered, and complex stories of this place and its people. It is so important to support Hawaii literature, to appreciate established writers, and to also encourage new voices. Both writers and readers are essential to literary communities to help them grow and thrive. So how can you support Hawaii literary communities. Forgive me because I am going to be pretty shameless in what I'm asking you to do. 
One, buy books by local writers and talk about those books. Two, attend literary events. Three, if you teach, invite local writers to give a reading to your students. Use works by Hawaii writers in your classes. Four, check out the Bamboo Ridge website and online bookstore at bamboo-ridge.org. You can get back issues and books that you will enjoy. You can become a subscriber and get new publications. Check out other Hawaii literary websites and blogs, such as It's Lit with PhDJ. And in case you don't already know about THROB, which stands for the Hawaii Review of Books, go online to check it out. Don Wallace, who won the Petrie Award last year, started the Hawaii Review of Books to provide a place for diverse literary communities to engage writers and readers. And Scott Kikawa, who just introduced me, writes a column of crime for crime novel fans as part of Draw. So everyone, go and do your part to support Hawaii literature and writers. You'll be doing a good thing for our communities. Mahalo for being here. Okay, thank you very much, Gail. And our next introducer is uh, Donald Pereira Cheng of uh, Kahalu, Hawaii, a former Cades winner himself. Uh, he is a professor of English at Leeward Community College and author of the novel Between Sky and Sea, Family's Struggle, written and published uh, fiction pieces in a number of uh, publications here in Hawaii on, on the mainland. So uh, he will introduce uh, Craig House, our second Petrie winner. Donald? Thank you, John. Hello, everyone. Uh, there's no way that a single nomination letter, or in this case, introduction, could encompass everything that Craig has done over the last 40 years working and teaching in Hawaii. He has edited and co-edited many, many notable books, including The Value of Hawaii and The Best of Aloha Shorts. For nine years, from 2004 to 2013, he co-produced the popular HPR series, Aloha Shorts which brought together Hawaii's finest writers, actors, and musicians for a celebration of Hawaii literature. He was a board member of Kumukuhua Theater and a past president of the Hawaii Literary Arts Council and is the current president of the Monkey Waterfall Theater Company. He has also worked in television, serving as the series scholar on the Biography Hawaii series. He is also an accomplished creative writer and actor. However, for students like me, his greatest impact is in those he helped to guide and teach many of whom are professors, writers, editors, executive directors, scholars, and change makers here in Hawaii and throughout the world. In recognition of his excellence in teaching, he has received many awards, including the Board of Regents Award and the Hung Wo and Elizabeth Lao Ching Foundation Award for faculty service to the community. Personally, I would not be where I am today without his guidance, insight, and support. Over a decade after taking my first class with him, he continues to be a mentor to me, and one of the most important influences in my professional life. My peers and fellow writers have similar stories about the impact that Craig has had on them. He is selfless with his time and in his dedication to his students and is similarly selfish in his support of the larger literary and artistic communities here in Hawaii. Sorry. He is an embodiment of this award and a champion of everything that the Hawaii Literary Arts Council stands for. Thank you, Craig, and congratulations. It's my honor, and, my, and I'm so grateful to introduce uh, Craig House. Craig, you're still muted. Thank you very much, Donald. I would like to thank the Hawaii Literary Arts Council and especially Eric Schaefer and John Simons for this award and the Hawaii Book and Music Festival for hosting this event. I would also like to acknowledge Elmer Boscos Bezel, whose work I became familiar with through working on the HPR and Bamboo Ridge series Aloha Shorts and Kauai Strong Washburn, whose novel I read as soon as it came out at the urging of Buddy Bess. 
I especially want to praise my co-honoree for the Petrie Award, Gail Harada, whom I have known for 40 years and whose spellbinding, hilarious, and deeply disturbing prose piece, Waiting for Henry, remains one of my all-time favorite works of Hawaii literature. Congratulations to all. When Donald told me I had been chosen for the Loretta Petrie Award for service to Hawaii's literary community, it stopped me in my tracks. I am one of the few people left who knew Loretta and one of the very few who worked with her very closely. When she was president of the Hawaii Literary Arts Council in 1982, I was her vice president. I was 26 years old and very enthusiastic but I'd only been in Hawaii for 18 months and was therefore utterly ignorant. So with Pat Matsueda and Lorna Hershenaw, two other great champions for Hawaii literature, Loretta was my mentor and guide, introducing me to the rewards, challenges, and demands of our literary scene. I therefore entered this scene as a volunteer and Loretta showed me how. Though a poet herself, she devoted herself to service. Up to that point for HLAC, that meant primarily writing the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts grants that brought national and international writers to Hawaii. But Loretta was the HLAC president who finally ended the practice of preparing one grant for those major poets and novelists. That was the term used in the grant and one grant for supporting Hawaii's writers and publications, usually receiving about a tenth of the major honor, uh, author amount. The result of Loretta's work was far more readings of local literature, supporting Bamboo Ridge and Hawaii Review readings, but also evenings organized by other artists. At that time, HLAC was averaging about 40 events a year. Publicity amounted to flyers sent out to our mailing list. Loretta and I both folded, labeled, and drove many mailings out to the airport post office. Holding an event also meant opening up the venue, staying to the end and locking up, and then heading to the inevitable reception held at the house of Kay Fredericks in Manoa or at Loretta's own home on Pueo in Kahala. Loretta showed me that such service was not only necessary, but valuable. She once told me, when I was grousing about someone not responding to calls or failing to deliver or carry out something, that the least stressful way to proceed was to treat all volunteer labor as good. When she finished her time with HLAC, she founded the Chaminade Literary Review, providing another venue for Hawaii writing. She and her co-author colleagues received little or no institutional support, and she certainly didn't get paid. She did it because she believed Hawaii literature was important and her service was a way to make sure it grew and flourished. She was disappointed in me when near the end of 1982, I waffled about succeeding her as president of HLAC. To get tenure, I had to publish and my department made it clear that service to the Hawaii literary scene would contribute little or nothing to my case. But in the end, Partly because of Loretta's response, I took on the job, and it was one of the best decisions of my life. Volunteering in the way Loretta had taught me brought me into contact quickly with people it would have taken me years to meet otherwise. That led to other service opportunities, other groups of artists and writers, and ultimately to the Board of Poets in the Schools, to the Hawaii Council for the Humanities as a scholar for literary programs, to Kumakuhua Theater, and ultimately to television and radio production, all resting on a foundation of offering service because Loretta had showed me that volunteer work was good and essential if the literary scene was going to be a scene. Along the way, I started writing and acting again, but always in the service of something, and more often than not, Hawaii's literature, art, and history. And I always took it for granted that I would be writing grants. I am honored to receive this appreciation of my service, bestowed in the name of Loretta Petrie, and in her name and spirit, I will also donate the generous monetary award that comes with it to a literary enterprise. I'm looking at you, Bamboo Ridge. Many thanks. Loretta was so important to me, making this honor truly appreciated.
Thank you and congratulations again, Craig and Gail on this honor that is richly deserved. Uh, it's time to turn to the Elliot Cades Awards. So let me give you a little background on that. The Elliot Cades Awards for Literature uh, awarded annually since 1988, were established by Charlotte and J. Russell Cades in memory of his brother, Elliot, a teacher and lover of literature. Since that time, there have been 62 awardees. And in this, the 32nd year of the awards, we add two more fine writers. The awards are administered by the Hawaii Literary Arts Council, founded in 74, uh, to encourage and promote literature and literary activity in Hawaii. The awards are accompanied by a substantial cash amount. So here to introduce Kavai Strong Washburn, the winner of the Emerging Artist is David Ball. But let me introduce him first. David Ball teaches in the Academy English Department at Punahou School and serves as series editor of Critical Approaches to Comic artists at the University Press of Mississippi. He is the author of False Starts, The Rhetoric of Failure and the Making of American Modernism, and the co-editor of the comics of Chris Ware, Drawing is a Way of Thinking. His essays and reviews have appeared in Modern Fiction Studies, Journal of Modern Literature, College Literature, Inside Higher Ed, Art Forum, The Comics Journal, Pedagogy, and the Los Angeles Review of Books. He's currently at work on a book exploring the intersections of comics and literary and artistic modernism, a, an intersection I think we probably all know. Go ahead, David, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, aloha kako. Uh, it's my deep pleasure to introduce uh, Kavai and help celebrate this prestigious award. Uh, Kavai Strong Washburn was born and raised on the Hamakua coast on Hawaii Island. His first novel, Sharks in the Time of Saviors, won the 2021 uh, Penn Hemingway Award for Debut Novel and the 2021 Minnesota Book Award. Uh, it was also longlisted for the 2020 Center for Fiction First Novel Prize and was a finalist for the 2021 Penn Jean Stein uh, Book Award. Uh, Punahou alumnus and also US President Barack Obama chose it as a favorite novel of 2020, and it was selected as a notable or best book of the year by over a dozen publications, including the New York Times and Boston Globe. Uh, it has also been translated into eight languages and counting. Uh, Washburn lives with his wife and two daughters in Minneapolis. Um, I, I first picked up Sharks in the Time of Saviors in Deshop and Kamaki, and was so transfixed by the writing that I ended up being late to pick up my kids from school. Um, it is ambitious, fiercely smart, musical writing in every sentence. Uh, it's the kind of book you immediately want to give to someone you admire to gauge their reaction. Uh, I had to engage in deep negotiations in order to get it back in time for this presentation. Um, we are so fortunate to have writers like Kavai telling stories like these. Uh, please join me in congratulating Kavai both on this well-deserved award and his already considerable contribution to the literature of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. Thank you to the Hawaii Literary Arts Council and to the Hawaii Books and Music Festival for honoring me with this award. I spent some time trying to put together what I thought would be a speech to, to describe to me what I believe one of the most important things is for the arts in general, but for literature in particular right now, which is to do the work of envisioning a future that we all wanna live in, as opposed to the future that we fear will come to pass. Because if we can't build the future that we, if we can't dream the future that we want to see, to work towards, then we'll never be able to get there. But the, that speech did not go so well <laughs> as I was writing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a short selection from, from my novel that I believe speaks to that to some degree. And I'll try my best to keep it uh, well within the, the timeline so that I can leave space for the other incredible honorees that are sharing the, the afternoon with me. <clears throat> Gods, I say. She shrugs. That's one name for it. 
All the stories you told me, I say, some ancient relative floating above me in the clouds, turning into an animal when I need it, guiding my destiny. I don't feel anything like that. I don't know the rules, mom says. Listen, I'd lift it off your shoulders if I could, Noah. There are so many places and people that need what you have. She seems more sure of herself the more she talks. But I believe you can still be what's needed. It's like you haven't been listening, I say. I don't want to do it anymore. The slanted smile she had earlier comes back as if she's in on a joke that someone told her behind my back. So you're done. She says, fine, fine. But tell me, you could have gone anywhere after what happened in Portland. So why did you come back here? Free food, I say half-heartedly, free rent. She shakes her head. She knows. I didn't even have to tell her. It just felt right, I say. It felt like what I needed to do. That feeling, she says. It's something speaking, Noah. So listen. She gives me a quick hug. We're glad to have you home. And so I listen. I do. I leave the concrete parts of the land. I find the parks and the valleys and the oceans. I let green and blue and gold songs scatter around me in the dawn and dusk in wild places. Illegal trails and vacant strips of sand. All the hidden places I knew about as a teenager. Places kids would go to smoke a joint to the roach or play with each other's bodies or realize a dare. I walk and I catch the bus and I hitchhike. Crisscrossing the island until it happens. There's a morning when I'm on the windward side, a steep trail somewhere between Makapu'u Point and the tide pools after. There's a slice of sand that plunges into midnight blue water and I slip into it. Let the current drag me into the deep. Ocean swells roll in above my armpits, rock against my shivering torso, the water below me clean and clear. The pull had been strong to come here, to get in the water. The call was almost its own gravity. It doesn't take long before I see what's been waiting. The sun is just risen and I can see four lashing shadows in the water headed directly for me, slowing to a liquid glide as they close the distance. They are sharks. And for a moment, my body shoots with fear. I should go, I should go. There's still time, but another part of me is done with fleeing. And that part of me makes a stand. I tread water gently and the sharks begin to circle. They go clockwise, gray reef sharks, and I name their parts as they pass. Snout, pectoral fin, dorsal ridge, caudal. Snout, pectoral fin, dorsal ridge, caudal. They circle sleepily, barely dancing their bodies. Their eyes find mine and my stomach wells with fear and excitement. I reach a hand out. The circle closes just enough that I can touch each one as they pass. Their bodies are ice slick, thick with potential violence. And when I touch, something blooms at the point of contact, travels the length of my arm, a channel of feeling that is the same as what I felt when I worked in the ambulance. Only now I don't see inside anything, but rather outside myself. Waikio Valley, its rivers, then lowy paddles of kalo stalks growing plump and green, swarming the valley bottom. And there my family is among it all, with many families on the beach sand or along the river or standing among the trees. The figures of our bodies become shadows and warp and diminish into the paddies, the river, the bay as if we are made of the same water, beating into the current with the same motion the sharks are making now, everything blending into the other. It all flows into me and I flow into it. My eyes are open, the sharks are gone. It's just me floating chest deep in the ocean, cold water, warm sunrise, but I know where I have to go, where it all began, of course, the valley. Thank you. Thank you, Kavai. That was wonderful. Um, I will briefly introduce, uh, well, you can't really briefly introduce Juliet Kono, but I'll try. Juliet Kono <laughs> was born in 1943 and raised in Hilo, Hawaii as a child. She survived the 1946 tsunami. She's written extensively about Japanese American experience across the generations. Using narrative and poetic styles, she seeks to give voice to those who would have otherwise faded into oblivion. She especially wants to give voice to the women immigrants who came to Hawaii 
as contract laborers and to their descendants who carry their legacy to a greater or lesser degree, depending on the tensile strength of family memories. She's written two books of poetry, Hilo Rains and Tsunami Years, and two books of linked verse with three other poets titled No Choice But to Follow and What We Must Remember. She also has written a short story collection, Ho'olulu Park and the Pepsinant Smile, and a novel, Anshu. She's the recipient of the Elliott Cates Award for Literature in 1991, Do Not Calculate. Hawaii Awards for Literature, the American Japanese National Literary Award, and a U.S.-Japan Friendship Commission Creative Artist Exchange Fellowships. Okay, sorry, that was long. She is retired from Leeward Community College, and she lives with her husband in Honolulu. It is my great pleasure and honor to introduce Juliet Kono. You're still muted, sorry. I thought I unmuted it. Okay, thank you, Eric and John, for your part in the Hawaii Book and Music Festival year after year. It's startling that 15 years have gone by. Also to all the awardees of the Cades and Petrie Awards, my deepest congratulations. Good going everyone, so well deserved. I knew of Elmo Pizzo through his work over the years. It was only after Bamboo Ridge decided to publish a book of his poems did I get to know him well. It was mainly from the time Christy Passion and I co-edited his book. Um, I want to read a little from um, the foreword of his book. And this is what I observed. When Elmer wrote these poems in, the, in his book, he had to work through the issues of writing in a second language about his and other immigrant workers' experiences. Writing his work in English had been a feat in itself for Elmer had to reprocess what he understood in Ilocano and Tagalog and reinterpret his understanding into idiomatic English for himself as well as that for the English reader. So he worked so diligently with us on his book and um, I have nothing but praise for all the hard work and his, oh, it, it was remarkable. Born and raised in the Philippines, Elmer came from a family of farmers, teachers, and religious leaders. After graduating in 1981 with a degree in agriculture, he worked for a time in the Philippines and then went to Saudi Arabia to record the intoler intolerable work conditions there he began writing about his experiences. Much of what he wrote is in part of the book called Leaving Our Sh Shadows Behind Us, published by Bamboo Ridge Press in 2019. A truly remarkable, extraordinary book, his work documents the Filipino community's culture, traditions, and heritage of hardworking immigrants. If you haven't already done so, check out this book. Congratulations, Elmer, on your Cades Award as an established writer. And here's Elmer, who will say more about his life and work. Elmer? Elmer, where are you? Oh, do you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Madam Juliet. Um, it's so kind of you to give me such lavish uh, praises for my work. But actually, you helped me a lot when you were doing this book. And so um, I thank you, everybody. Uh, and I would like to congratulate all this, all of my fellow awarded here today. And I don't know, I have a hodgepodge of thank yous to do. So I did not write any more speech. I would like to thank you, Hawaii Bu Book and Music Festival, 
for organizing this event year after year after year. I want to thank Hawaii Literary Arts Council and the Elliot Cates Award founders. I'd like to thank Bamberidge Press. I'd like to thank all the readers and supporters of Hawaiian literature here in Hawaii and on the mainland and everywhere else in this world. And I'd like to thank all my fellow writers also who struggles, who struggle and do their thing at the same time to contribute something beneficial for our culture and especially here in Hawaii. I, as Madame Juliet says, I am uh, I am from the Philippines, born and raised there. Uh, and I have a real trouble, difficulty, because English is my second language, but I persevered. I, I, I tried my best and did my best, give all my best. And I'm I can consider myself as an accidental writer because I am not a poet. I'm not, to be honest with all of you. But since that encounter with Mrs. Marihara, the late Marihara, one day I was working in her house as a house painter. And I, it was on a break when I was writing again. And she approached me and asked me what I was doing. And so I told her that I was writing something that I consider nothing though. Uh, she said she wanted to take a look. And then all of a sudden she asked me to send her if I have a lot more of those kind of writings to her. And so I did and she encouraged me. It was my first time to see the University of Hawaii Manua when we together both when we both together attended a reading there at the University of Hawaii Ballroom, Ballroom or something, I forgot. And then she, she had told me that one day she would like to see me there standing and reading my own poems. So it, she told me that in 1998 and 1999, I, wrote, I read my first poems published by Bamberidge Press. And since that time on, I keep on writing in Bamberidge Press, keep on accepting most of my poems until I collected probably more than almost 67 now published by Bamberidge Press. And at one time, the 25th founding anniversary, the recognized my poem as the best poetry together with the late Yu Chigimuro. Um, and so I thank all, all of these people. I thank them dead, dead or living. And going back to the Philippines, I want to thank to the National Artist for Literature there, Edith L. Chimpo. She sponsored me to become a fellow at the National Writers Workshop in Dumaguiri in year 2000. And, and then I keep on going back to the Philippines, reading, doing my stuff there. And since that time on, when I was introduced to fellow writers there in the Philippines. And, and besides those activities, I really love my wood carving. That's all I do. I love my wood carving. That's where I started before becoming what you call me now as a poet. And thank you so much for giving me this award. It means so much. It means so much, not only to me, but not only to the fellow Ilocanos here, but to all those struggling and wanting and aspiring to be a writer and to be known in spite of all the difficulties, the obstacles, they're, they're going to parallel as they go along in the writing. So I hope with this, they can be inspired to, to do better. And I hope too that somehow, someday, they will become writers 
getting this award as well. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Noilua Miki Aloha Pumihana. Thank you. Thank you, Elmer. And congratulations again to Elmer and Kavai. Now at this point, uh, we have, if I remember right, we have till 4.55. Uh, so I don't see any uh, questions in the uh, chat, but certainly anybody here can comment on anything they would like to at this point. So feel free to step up and say stuff. Anything? There is a nice uh, comment from Daryl Lum here. Elmer, poetry is your first language. Keep speaking your language. Marie Hara would be very proud. We all are. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you are welcome. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Let's see what we got. All right, I don't see any questions. Right, I have nothing to say. So let's put John back on and let him thank everybody. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Uh, thanks, Eric. Congratulations to um, all the recipients. Um, uh, the, uh, and not just for the, the writing, but the tremendous backstories that um, people bring uh, to their work and to their presentations um, that um, sometimes mean as much to uh, the audience as the actual text. And so very inspiring uh, narratives uh, that you've shared. Thank you so much. So while we're thanking, I would like to uh, mention the names of a, a few people at uh, Royal Larry Arts Council who helped out or weren't here today, but they were instrumental in organizing it. Mike Liederman, uh, Don Wallace, Susan Schultz, Tom Galmarino. And if, uh, so we, uh, we appreciate uh, their their uh, help um, uh, putting this putting this together. I also uh, want to um, uh, join others in, um, in in thanking the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. Tremendous shout out to Roger Jelinek, who is uh, a uh, this I don't know how one person uh, accomplishes so much under such great pressure. But uh, uh, Roger, you are really a dynamo and. Uh, and the uh, Hawaii Book and Music Festival is, uh, and the people of Hawaii are in, in your debt for your, for your hard work. Um, University of Hawaii at Manoa, thank you very much. And all the sponsors of the festival. And um, I hope that people will um, sign up for some of the other events. A number of our colleagues and friends uh, are, are uh, taking part in events. And it also uh, goes beyond um, literature to uh, include uh, uh, a number of topics, uh, climate, uh, health, sustainability, uh, wine culture, um, very uh, important topics in our own community uh, are being dealt with uh, at this uh, festival. And so uh, if you've explored the schedule as I have, you, you see that uh, there are a number of intriguing uh, sessions that have been scheduled. So thanks very much to Roger and the university uh, for that very ambitious approach. So I'm going to, um, I think I'm gonna wind up here by simply saying that um, uh, congratulations to the writers, the recipients and the introducers and those in the audience. Congratulate the writers and continuing gratitude to the readers. And thank you very much. Hope that uh, everybody is safe and healthy and that maybe next year we can be back again in one form or another. Thank you. And John, you say a word. Everyone, take care, stay safe, be well. Thank you. I'd, I'd just like to say a word about um, how you engage the festival. Um, it's as close as you, as you can get to a physical festival in that you register once and then you click on whatever takes your fancy and you just browse around. And it's, um, you know, in, in a physical festival, you mean to go to one event or two events and suddenly you find yourself drawn 
into into many more, and you want you wonder afterwards why. We, uh, we're now on the physical events have been averaging four six hours per, per attendee. So I mean, uh, quite a lot on both days. So um, this is as close as we can get to that. Uh, the next one is going to be in October and hopefully physical at, on the UH Manoa campus. And I'd particularly like to draw your attention to uh, Joy Harjo's event. Um, and she's the uh, poet laureate and uh, she's in conversation with five <coughs> contributors to her latest book who are all active right here in Hawaii. And uh, uh, please don't miss that. Thank you very much for everyone. I've enjoyed this event and uh, it's not work, it's actually very engaging. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Aloha.